Amica is a leading Polish kitchen appliances manufacturer. Its first gas, coal cooker, was produced in Wronki in 1957. Amica's appliances, produced in Wronki, are now very well known throughout the European markets. Over 50% of the company's production is currently exported and it plans for the next few years are expected to generate further growth in export sales. The Amica Group generates more than 70% of its revenue from sales on over 50 global markets. The company is most popular in Germany, Great Britain and Scandinavia. The Amica Group portfolio also includes the international brands Gram, Hansa and CDA. Gram, which was established in 1899 and acquired by Amica in 2001, is a traditional and prestigious Denmark-based brand known throughout Scandinavia. Hansa, which is a brand associated with reliable technology, is very popular on the Eastern European markets. CDA, a British brand acquired in 2015, enjoys superb recognition in such distribution channels as design studios for kitchen furniture. The Amica Group employs approximately 2,500 people and its plants and offices in Poland and abroad. Let's find out how it all happened. Alina jankowska wrzoska Vice President Sales and Marketing at Amica, talks about Amica's journey from a local producer of household appliances to a global player, acquiring companies on different European markets. We will learn what determines the choice of equity-based entry mode and what challenges might await you on the way. It was a time of very big, I would say, dramatic even changes in the Polish economy. Thanks to the economic and political transformation in Poland, it has begun to be possible to develop international presence of our company. As a first step, we thought about exporting. Foundation for the future development of exporting was laid by the German firm that joined our group together with the owner. Later, in the early 2000s, we bought a Scandinavian refrigerator company with a strong, well-recognized brand. As a next step, we started to develop our presence in Russia and on the Eastern markets through our German brand. I have to admit, it was all hit and miss in the beginning. We started exporting with help of our German subsidiary and later developed our direct export from headquarters. We still export a lot of products, not only to the countries that are relatively close geographically, like for example to the Balkans or post-Soviet countries, but also to Vietnam, Thailand and even to Australia, which remains a big challenge as we do not know these markets well enough yet. At some point we developed our strategy and decided to start acquiring companies on different European markets. We found out that it's much easier to distribute our products through distribution channels already developed by the acquired firms. It's still a complicated process though, but we do our best to use the bought brand to fill our production capacity. We plan to increase our global presence in the future especially on the Eastern markets. This strategy stems mainly from the growing saturation of the European markets. It's getting more and more difficult for the companies like ours to build their market share. We are also aware of increased competition from the Chinese players. They are acquiring new companies in a very fast pace and bought two rival firms only last year. For our company, such processes take much more time and we wouldn't be able to reach our goals so quickly. I don't think we will ever focus on acquisitions only. We intend to stick to our international expansion model in the future. It seems to be working well for us. A mix of export and acquisitions 
depending on the geographical distance and country's political and cultural conditions. Our presence in the Balkans, from the very beginning, was supported by an agent. He developed the brand's recognition in the region without any fixed costs on our side. I think it's a very convenient approach. It was a clever step to start from only one person developing our business there. The strategic question for the next years remains when to move from this entry mode to acquisitions. We keep asking ourselves this question and the answer will be a part of our strategy for the upcoming years. In 2007, we tried to build our own brand on the Italian market without having any customer base and as it turned out, thorough knowledge on the market conditions. We hired an experienced manager to develop a new company and failed. It turned out that there are already very well recognized brands present in this particular market and existing connections among distributors play an important role. It was very difficult for a new brand to enter this market. We had to bear high structural costs without having any revenue. And in the end, we decided to shut down our Italian undertaking. It has taught us to revise this business model, opening subsidiary without having a customer base. At this moment, we don't operate in the Italian market and are starting to consider possibilities to enter this market in a different way again. In the late 1990s, we also took into consideration starting a greenfield project in Russia. We were very much interested in building a production site focusing on gas cookers. In the end, we decided against it. After initial research, we found out that we didn't have very profound knowledge of the market at the time and the potential risks were high. We weren't entirely sure how to best operate in this market. At first, it was perceived as a controversial decision, but soon proved to be right, when the Russian crisis began in 1998. At some point, we decided that in order to develop on the European markets, we need to start acquiring new companies. Trying to build a brand recognition in a new market has proved to be a difficult task in which we sometimes failed and other times succeeded. But we've learned a lot from our previous experiences. Our latest acquisitions include a British and a French company. The British firm produces and designs studios for kitchen furniture with its own brand. The French company doesn't have its own brand and adjustment of its business model to ours was and still is a difficult task. We developed our international expansion strategy based on firm internal belief in further development on the European markets in the sector of kitchen appliances. We wanted to use our production capacity, needed distribution channels and brands owned by well-structured businesses. We knew already that starting a business on a new market on our own is not something we excel at. There were certain market possibilities though we had to take into consideration. We realized that there are only so many prospective partners out there and turned for help to consulting companies. These firms provided us with a list of potential companies open to restructuring, licensing or selling their brand. After a thorough evaluation, if we were interested in the presented project, the whole acquisition process would begin from due diligence, negotiating, to purchase and signing the contract.
Before we sign the contract, we perform a thorough due diligence that may take from two weeks to a month. Our specialists, together with consulting agents, prepare a well-structured bucket list to check within each of the acquired companies. The whole process happens internally and requires a dedicated team equipped with appropriate tools to check various data. The team has to focus mainly on the due diligence process and is excluded from their other day-to-day -day duties. Nowadays, we use virtual data room, so our team doesn't have to travel as much as they used to a couple of years ago. Based on the acquired data, we develop a potential bidding model and start negotiations, which are a vital point in the process. Let me show on an example how crucial are they. One of our recent cases includes an acquisition attempt in Poland, which did not end successfully, even though from the strategic standpoint, the acquisition would be highly beneficial for us. Unfortunately, both sides had very different approaches to the potential end price. We tried negotiating for a while, but we couldn't reach any consensus in the end. We usually buy shares of the whole company in one step. In case of the British company, it was one step, which took us one year. In case of the French company, there were two steps extended to three years, which was connected to the liquidation process of the acquired firm. Most acquired firms already have their own brand, production site, workforce, offices and warehouses. When preparing a business model with each acquisition, we assume the emergence of synergies. For example, 10% savings in our purchasing processes. We calculate this potential savings based on our previous experiences, then negotiate the agreement, sign the contract and pay the final price. In the next step, our managers rely heavily on the agreed business plan and start turning it into reality after the acquisition process has been completed. I have to admit it's a big challenge. In Great Britain, we hired so-called synergy managers who were responsible for adaptation of processes on both sides, as a lot of changes were necessary. Four managers were sent to Great Britain to make sure that all processes run smoothly after the acquisition has been completed. The Synergy Managers program turned out to be a big success and we intend to continue with this approach in our future acquisitions. We face a lot of challenges along the way. Sometimes we can really work out great synergies. In some cases, however, it's difficult to meet the assumptions from the initial business plan. In Great Britain, for example, initially we planned to change a distributor. In the end, we decided against it once we found out that our customers would receive worse quality product. Such situations happen a lot. One of the biggest challenges is also combining two different organizational cultures. We do not have any acquisitions on the Chinese market yet, but even the British market has showed us how tricky culture differences can be. In our British firm, we noticed a very different approach to work, challenges and relations between headquarters and the acquired company. In the beginning, it came as a surprise, but I have to say it was a great learning experience for the future. Our expectations in the acquisition process are not always met. Sometimes we are surprised very positively. Other times we have to modify our initial plans according to the changing external conditions. In case of our British company, the political environment plays a crucial role. Right now we are facing a threat of Brexit, problem of an unstable currency, 
and tensions on the line between China and the US. We are very much aware that we do not operate in a vacuum, so potential failure is not always possible to predict beforehand. However, we learn from our mistakes and are becoming better and better with each new acquisition. It's not an easy task though, I would recommend using knowledge and support of a consulting company when undergoing your first acquisition process. My overall recommendation would be don't make optimistic plans, stay realistic. Always assume that the external environment may change and analyze beforehand if you can work within the new culture. Think, how can you support the transition process in the acquired company and transmit the processes from headquarters? In our case, we found out that our organizational culture seems to be working really well in German environment, whereas it can create a lot of challenges in Great Britain. I would also say, research the market well, to make sure that you can sell your products also under the acquired brand. Assume that the whole acquisition project will take up to two to three years during which your synergy managers will have to take care of it. Be aware that these experts during this time will not perform their other day-to-day -day duties. Remain conservative is my another recommendation. If you can't afford the acquisition, do not go for it. Assume to work a long time on the business plan before making the ultimate decision. Even with our current experience, we would never decide on an acquisition within two months. I really cannot highlight this enough. Time spent working out the business model is incredibly valuable. It was very much visible in our acquisition attempt in Spain in 2012. Based on our calculations, we decided not to pursue the acquisition process even though the potential partner seemed to fit very well into company strategy. The firm was taken over by our competitor, whose investment, as of 2019, did not end successfully. Such examples prove that our conservative approach, combined with our low appetite for risk, is effective. And we intend to follow this approach in the future. Thank you.